Right, Deborah, our final extract for today. Exactly. It's slowish work, and he stabbed and brought up a fish and threaded it on the twine. The firelight cast the cuts and scars on his hands into sharp relief. I'm erecting new portions every month or so. I've fallen out of trees more often than is ideal, but it will run a complete green roof and a living protection for the ruins. A protection from what? From people surveying the land from the air, he said shortly, for people looking for their El Dorado. From people looking to pack places like this into parcels of stone and send them to curious ladies and gentlemen in Chelsea for the price of a bus driver's yearly wage. From people exactly like me. Like you, but you're saving it. No, I'm undoing my own harm, but God knows what I might have done when I was younger. I was hungry to have my name in black capitals on the front page of the Times. He glanced sideways at Fred. Fred shifted uncomfortably and looked very hard at the water. The explorer stabbed again. This fish was still writhing hard and he had to smack it against the sole of his shoe to kill it. Perhaps it was that that made him flush red in the firelight. Europeans have said cities like this were impossible. Europeans never believed places like this. They believed the jungle could never have supported such numbers. They said it was too infertile and called it counterfeit paradise. He paused, staring unseeingly at the fish on the string. The tribes of the Europeans meet that the Europeans met was so small that people believed they could never have been great sweeping cities. They didn't realise that the tribes they met on the river were small precisely because they were more readily found by men like me, because European diseases were killing so many of them. Measles, influenza, God knows I've seen enough of that. This place doesn't need any more people like me. A deep red anger spread down his neck to his arms. Fred didn't move, he only listened, harder than he'd ever listened to anything in his life. My wife was born in a village in the jungle. We were young, barely twenty. She breathed the jungle, wore the jungle. She died from measles soon after our boy was born. His voice was flat. She caught it from a troop of Englishmen, amateur explorers. And his son? What happened to his son? He would have turned four the week after he died. Cholera. The explorer stared at the dark. This land could have once supported millions of lives, and one day the world, world will know that. The time will come, I hope, when the word values people as much as it values land. But for now, we do not need more men in pith hats marching through the jungle towards us. He looked down at the path they had walked. Neither the people who passed through the city nor the city itself would be safe. Fred's blood was moving faster than usual through his body. He wanted to speak, to say something that would stop the explorer, but his voice wouldn't come. Which is why the man stabbed at the opaque water. But this time he missed and there was a shake of passion in his hand. I ask again that you swear not to tell anyone about this place. I ask with every ounce of my heart. Fred was glad it was dark, glad he couldn't see the explorer's face, nor the explorer his. I swear I won't, he thought. How can you make someone see that you're not lying, that you mean it? I'll never tell, he said louder, I swear. The explorer bowed his head. Thank you, Fred. I didn't understand before. I hadn't thought, I mean, I thought it was simple. Extraordinary things are rarely simple. But if you're right about what would happen, if you're sure, I would never dare say I was sure, but I believe I am right and I believe enough to swear by it. Then I swear too. The explorer gave a sigh and it sounded of things that Fred could not untangle. Thank you. I'll die before I tell, said Fred. I'll explain it to the others and I'll never say a single thing about you. Me neither, said a voice. You're my explorer. I don't like to share. Fred jumped. Max had paddled back into the lake, still holding the torch and was standing directly behind the explorer, rigged deep in water, hugging his knee from behind. The explorer reared away, startled by the boy's hands. Good God, it's best not to show affection when you're holding a naked flame child, he said gruffly. But he ruffled Max's hair. Max giggled and waded through the shadows towards Lila and Con, singing a song whose lyrics seemed to be comprised entirely of the words fish. The explorer handed Fred his spear. Here. Try with mine, it's lighter. But what will you use? I don't know. I don't technically need a spear. And he crouched low, chest deep in the water and lowered his hands to his elbows. One hand flashed out through the water. There was a certain amount of thrashing and the explorer held up a fish the size of his forearm, clasped it in both hands. It shone scales in the moonlight. The only downside of doing this, he said, is it sometimes they turn out to be a piranha and that can be awkward. Fred thought of his father back home, wrapped tightly in his pinstripe days. I wish you were my father, he muttered so quietly that the explorer couldn't hear. The explorer turned his eyebrows high. I would not wish that. I did not excel at the job, he said sharply. I'm afraid it is possible your father will surprise you. It's in all natures of fathers. They're not predictable as they seem. 
He is, said Fred. I wanted... He stopped, but the darkness made it easier to speak. I wanted to tell him about this place. I thought he'd be proud. I'm sure your father is proud already, said the explorer. He was looking down at the water, half listening. No, he isn't. Fred glared back at the man. It's simple. He'd rather my mother had never had me, and that she wouldn't. It's not simple, Fred. The explorer turned and looked him full in the face. You may stop saying that word. Cut it out of your vocabulary. The complexity of it, the complexity of it, of it is endless. Nothing in life is simple. Fred sighed. He was disappointed in the explorer. Adults always say that. It remains true. The world is larger than any human imagination. How could it ever be simple? He ducked underwater, his body disappearing under the black surface and came up holding in his fist something resembling an eel, which thrashed against his chest. He went on as if nothing had happened. A man can love and fear the responsibility that comes with love. A secret can be at once selfish and necessary. For God's sake, boy, truth is a thorny and vicious. It's vicious like the jungle itself. He turned to crouch in the water again and then suddenly he froze. He didn't raise his voice, he didn't need to. Max, Fred, quick, out of the water. Con, Lila, get out of the water. Fred twisted to look round. Why, out, he shouted, louder. Con and Lila waded towards them. What's happening? Move faster! The explorer sprinted through the shallow, his bad leg dragging behind him. He grabbed Max around the waist, knocking Max's torch into the water and strode an uneven step to the bank. Fred ran after them, tripping over submerged roots and Lila pulled Con through the mud. The explorer dropped Max on the ground. He landed head first, but Lila scooped him in her arms before he started screaming and the explorer turned to raise his spear to the lake. What's wrong? What did we do? Nothing. Now that the children were out of the lake, he was placid. We're leaving. What is it? Those eyes, they shine red like a fish. They're at the far side of the lake. Lila swallowed, is that what I think it is? His eyes must have been sharp, for I could see only a flash of red and grey shape. Came and said the explorer. It's an old one, maybe eight foot long, probably not interested in any of you. But he didn't finish the sentence. Have you ever been bitten? asked Con. A few times. Come, we might as well leave rather than fast. And he tossed Max into the air, grabbed hold of one of his ankles and threw him over his shoulder. Follow me, you three. Put your feet where mine are. Max, hanging over the man's back, foraged in his pocket. Fred, whispered Max from upside down. I've got something to tell you. What is it? I ate a tiny bite of the explorer's fish while I was waiting. I was hungry. He held out the fish and it had finger marks pressed in it. Is that all right? Fred looked at the crease in Max's face. Yes, he said. He tried to sound serious. I wouldn't do it again. People eat, do eat raw fish, but I wouldn't do it. I won't die. No, I don't think so. The explorer twisted round to look at Fred, almost smacking Max's head against a tree. Yes, you're safe, he said, or rather, he clarified, you could still die out here, but if you pay attention, you'll be safe from a lot of things. And he stopped turning back to look at the fire of the child behind him in the moonlight. Do you see all this? The explorer held his torch, casting highlight over the sleeping birds. You don't have to be in the jungle to be an explorer. Every human on the earth is an explorer. He walked on, Max's thin ribs bouncing against his spine, carrying him home.